Okay. So now that we've gone through taxes on both the consumers and the producers, and we've shown that no matter who you place the tax on, the economic effect will be the same, we're ready to look at perhaps an easier way to solve tax problems like this once we recognize the fact that placing a tax introduces a wedge between the prices that consumers pay and the prices that, consume, that producers get to keep. However, the quantity remains the same. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to think of this price up here that the producers are, that the consumers are paying, I like to denote this as P plus. And this price down here, the one that the producers are keeping, I like to denote this as P minus, okay? And what we know is that P plus minus P minus has to be equal to the amount of the tax, okay? In other words, the price that we pay minus the price that the producers get to keep has to be equal to the amount of the tax. That's just an identity, okay? And so what we can do is we can solve this problem much faster if we use this wedge method by noting that the difference here is equal to the tax. So this distance here would be the tax. Now in our case, the tax was $2, okay? <clears throat> so we know that the tax is equal to two. So what we can do is we can do a really clever trick, but first we have to note that we have to switch this to being in terms of P and this in terms of P as well. So I can rewrite this equation here in terms of P by subtracting P from both sides. I'm sorry, adding P to both sides and subtracting Q from both sides. And that would just get me P is equal to 12 minus Q. Now in this case, the demand curve represents the amount of money that the, the consumers are paying. So in this nomenclature uh, here, this would be P plus. And I can solve this equation for P pretty easily just by dividing both sides by two. And so I get P is equal to Q over two. And this is the, uh, con the producers of pizza. And so this would be the P minus, okay? And so now what I know, <clears throat> because the tax is two, what I can therefore say is that 12 minus Q, and this will be the quantity, minus q over 2 has to be equal to 2. In other words, p plus minus p minus is equal to tax. Okay, And we can uh, simplify this and just say 12 minus q minus q over 2 has to be equal to 2. Okay, uh, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2 just to get rid of the fraction to make everything easier for us. So 24 minus 2q minus q is equal to 4. I am going to uh, subtract 4 from both sides. That will get me 20 is equal to, and I'm going to add all the q's to the other side. So that will give me 20 is equal to 3q. I divide by 3 divide by three, okay? And that will get me Q is equal to 6.67, which if you recall, was the quantity that we had before. And from here, I can take this 6.67 and I can plug it in to here to get the price that the producers are going to keep. And I can plug it into here to get the price that the producer, as the consumers are going to pay. So 12 minus 6.67 is equal to 5.33. <clears throat> and 6.67 divided by 2 is equal to 3.33. And once you understand the incidence of the tax doesn't matter, this wedge method becomes very appealing and very quick. There's no more shifting curves around, finding multiple points, finding all kinds of weird stuff. You can just simply go straight to the answer and get the quantity right here. But this only works if you understand that the incidence of the tax, so again, whether I place the tax on the consumers and therefore reduce their demand or decrease their demand downward by two, or whether I place the tax on the producers 
and therefore raise their supply by two. Either one doesn't matter, right? Once you understand that, the wedge method becomes much, much faster to solve for incidences of taxation.